Let's start at the very beginning. This is your Bible teaching program called Search for Truth, and it comes from your Bible teacher, Brian Johnston. We start a new series today, so as I said, let's start at the very beginning. The title of today's study is Something Out of Nothing, referring to the birth of creation. The theme of all the study talks in this series centres upon miracles atheists believe while failing to explain God's wonders. The five talks in this series will be available in the book and I'll explain how to send for it later in the programme. So let's hear Brian now with Something Out of Nothing. Something Out of Nothing? Is that how the universe began? The front cover of Discover magazine in April 2002 once announced that the universe burst into something from absolutely nothing, zero, nada. And as it got bigger, it became filled with even more stuff that came from absolutely nowhere. In this way, the so-called Big Bang story tries to explain the beginning of the universe. It's obvious that the universe could not have come from the same sort of stuff as our present universe, because then that matter or energy would also have needed to have a beginning, only one that was further back in time. That leaves the option that it had to come from nothing. In other words, nothing became everything with no known cause whatsoever. You'd be correct in thinking that's a magical belief, for those who would acknowledge nothing beyond the existence of material things, there's no explanation for the origin of the universe. Effectively, what they say is, it must have happened because we're here. In other words, it happened just like magic, just like the proverbial rabbit out of the hat. Only, in the case of the universe, that's a rather large rabbit. There are other aspects of the Big Bang, the accepted story of our universe's origin, that are equally miraculous. What's known as the Standard Model has a period of very rapid expansion referred to as inflation. This involves more magic, because there's no known cause for how this supposed expansion began, since it requires an enormous input of energy. There's also no known physical mechanism for how it could produce an expansion of space itself that's actually faster than the speed of light. However, these related miracles must have happened or else the Big Bang idea simply doesn't work. Operational science, on the other hand, tests events that are repeatable. And history isn't repeatable, of course. The Big Bang story requires immense imagination. How the universe got started is just one of five major examples of atheists believing in miracles without having any explanation for them. And we'll be looking at all five of them in this series. But in case you think I'm presenting some kind of maverick view, here's what was said when the New Scientist magazine published a letter signed by 33 top scientists that had the title Bucking the Big Bang. What it said was this, Big Bang Theory relies on a growing number of things that we have never observed. Inflation, dark matter and dark energy are the most prominent. Without them, there would be a fatal contradiction between the observations made by astronomers and the predictions of the Big Bang Theory. In no other field of physics, they said, would this continual resource to new hypothetical objects be accepted as a way of bridging the gap between theory and observation. It really is like the little boy who said, now let me get this straight, first there was nothing and then it exploded? That's a fair cop. You can't get something from nothing. And that means we have to ask, how could anything exist unless someone put it there? This question has been used as a classic argument for the existence of God, an argument that theoretical physicist Lawrence Krauss tried to tackle in his book, A Universe from Nothing. He explains the nothing that the universe came from as being a sea of energy, obeying some very special laws of physics. 
But nothing is supposed to mean just that. No thing. In other words, the complete absence of any matter or energy or force or space or laws of physics. I'm afraid a sea of energy obeying some very special laws of physics is not nothing. Matter and energy are interchangeable, and so it's a very definite something, and we'd have to ask, how did it come to be there? We mentioned a someone a moment ago, and that brings us to the alternative idea about how the universe began, for that someone is described in the Bible. Here's Revelation chapter 4, verse 8. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, the Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come. Worthy are you, verse 11 continues, our Lord and our God, to receive glory and honour and power. For you created all things, and because of your will they existed and were created. In two places in the Old Testament, the text of the Bible essentially repeats God's name as Yah Yahweh. The Hebrew language uses the duplication of words for emphasis. Yahweh refers to the self-existent one, and God's unchanging character is being stressed here. God is. He just is. There's no other who is like God. We, his creatures, are different. We are creatures completely defined by change. We're not really human beings. We are human becomings. Greek thinkers had it right when they said, whatever is, is, and what is not cannot become. In other words, you need a supreme being before a universe or anything else can ever become, that is, come into existence. Or to borrow from historic Christian teachers, God is not only the supreme being, but he is a necessary being. What that saying is, God absolutely must be. He simply cannot not be. For if God were to cease to be, the universe would vaporise and just disappear. Looking at it the other way round, this has been used as a classic argument for the existence of God. For suppose God did not exist, and that there truly once was not anything, not even a sea of energy or being scientific laws, then there still would be and could only be nothing now. There is no such thing as a free lunch. You can't get something out of nothing, not spontaneously and not in 13.7 billion years. To believe otherwise, as we've seen, is to believe in magic. In fact, it's worse than that. It'd be like pulling a rabbit out of a hat without the hat and without the magician. It's God's unique prerogative to bring something out of nothing. Revelation chapter 4 verse 11 that we've already mentioned says God created all things and because of his sovereign will they came into existence, into being. There's no other possible logical, philosophical or scientific explanation. More recently, some people, for example the late Professor Stephen Hawking, have put forward the idea that the universe created itself. However, there's a pretty basic problem with the idea of a universe that creates itself. For in order to do so, it must violate the law of non-contradiction. What do I mean by that? Well, the law of non-contradiction has got to be one of the most intuitive and self-evidently obvious of all laws. It simply says something cannot be both green and not green at the same time. You can, of course, substitute anything in place of the colour green that I used in that example. For instance, a universe cannot both exist and not exist at the same time. And that's exactly what's implied by a universe that somehow creates itself. It needs to exist in order to do the creating, but it also must not exist so as to be brought into existence. To both exist and not exist at the same time breaks the law of non-contradiction. It's nonsense. And to escape such nonsense, we need only turn to the famous opening lines of the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. 
This isn't magic, because God, who is eternal and omnipotent, is a sufficient cause for the universe. And he can exist eternally, and therefore has no beginning, because he is a non-material entity. God is spirit, as the Bible says in many places. By the way, the opening ten words of the Bible collide head-on with the major assumption that lies behind the Big Bang story. And that assumption is the one that says the earth isn't a special place. Why do intelligent people resort to believing in magic, uncaused events, at so many points? The Apostle Paul in the Bible, in Romans chapter 1 verse 21 in fact, says that when people deny that the Creator God exists, they end up with futile thinking. Nothing makes more sense than in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. This is because the idea of an original singularity, an original super dense point, can't be explained in terms of the current laws of physics. It's where they break down. So it's a problem for science, but not a problem for the God of the Bible. Thanks for your talk today, Brian. And I'd like to remind you all there's a transcript book of all the talks in this series, which would be helpful if you want to pursue further study. So please let me remind you, as I said, how you can freely receive a copy. Firstly, it's available online and you can obtain a copy by downloading from churchesofgod.info forward slash media. Alternatively, you can write to us and request a hard copy book be posted to you. Just ask for the title, Miracles Atheists Believe. And don't forget to include your postal address so we know where to send it. And now, you can use email or the post, and here's our address. Search for Truth, Hayes Press, The Barn, Flaxlands, Royal Watton Bassett, Swindon SN48DY UK. Our email address is sft at churchesofgod.info. Now, by going to www.searchfortruth.podbean.com, you can actually download the programmes onto your own device for uh, listening again at a more convenient time. So that's all we have. So I'm delighted you've been with us today and I hope you enjoyed today's study. Next week we have the second talk in this series and it's called Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and I'd be very happy if you could join us. But for now it's goodbye and very best wishes from our Bible teacher Brian, our producer David, our singers and me, John. So see you again soon and in the meantime we wish you God's richest blessings. (laughs) 